After a detrimental 34 to 30 blown loss to the Detroit Lions, Chicago Bears head coach Matt Nagy moves to 13 and 15 in his last 28 games in Chicago. So is it a matter of hours when he is fired by the Bears, a matter of days, a matter of months, or a matter of years? Today, in episode number 1 of 2, an episode number 102 of Uncut, we're going to be breaking it down. So let's hop right into it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Episode 102 of Uncut. Bear Down, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week, no matter how bad the season's going. Uh, maybe that's something we should add in there. Uh, we're going to be discussing the future of Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy in Chicago because it went from us hoping that it was going to be uh, something that was happened to something that intimately needs to be discussed. So let's get into it. I am your host, Chris Malpe. To the right of me, I am joined by my co-host, also video editor and producer here, Zach Rimbo. Zach, uh, how's it going, my friend? You live streamed with us earlier for four hours. It's been a long day. How, how you doing? Uh, I mean, I'm doing better. I, I mean, obviously, you can't really explain the emotions that you're feeling as a Bears fan, just kind of watching the scene fall apart in front of your eyes. But, um, you know, as the day's going on, just – you know, kind of living with it and, and moving on. So I saw you have a, like an hour and a half rant on Instagram live. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're here today to talk about Nagy and Ryan Pace. Look, the question at this point is not, are they going to get fired? It's when they're going to get fired. Uh, I think everyone around the organization realizes that I, I said on Twitter earlier, are Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy going to be employed tomorrow? I don't think the bears should gift them another day. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're millionaires. They're not cutting it. I'm sick of this team being content. Zach and I are both 20 years old. This team has been content our entire lives and we were too young to very much grasp or remember when the bears were in the super bowl the one time in 2006. So Zach, I want to ask you, I mean, obviously, you watched the entire game with us today. It was a meltdown. It was an absolute collapse. Is there any question that Nagy and Pace aren't done after this season? No, I mean, if you look at this team, uh, it's it's not the best talent-wise on the offensive side of the ball, but you're talking about, you know, a defense that was generational in terms of its, its, its talent and its ability and, and the whole reason we went, I think we went 12-4 in 2018. And, you know, since then, nothing's been the same. And, uh, I mean, it's obvious, you know, the, the team's falling apart in front of us. It seems like uh, some of the chemistry on the team has also left. And that just, I mean, it, it tells you everything. It tells you, um, I mean, maybe the locker room isn't as bad or we haven't heard as many stories, um, but this team just isn't well coached. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, that falls along the lines of, uh, you know, in terms of management up like the front office, um, you'll see them make a lot of moves and they don't really support the moves that they make. They just kind of do it and, I don't know. It, it's just, it's not a question of if um, it's definitely a question of when, like you were saying. Yeah. And we'll get into when a little bit later. I think when the wheels started falling off, at least for me, I mean, obviously we saw some really tough losses. The Titans loss was terrible. The Vikings loss was terrible. The Rams loss was probably the tip of the domino, obviously of what now is a six game losing streak. But for me, you know, uh, two key moments stand out for me in Nagy's press conferences recently. Um, one being on Monday after the green Bay game, when he told his players uh, to have some personal pride, he told his defense to step up. And we saw the defense easily have the worst performance of the year today uh, against the Lions. And kudos to Matthew Stafford and Daryl Bevel and all of them. I'm sure they're doing much better without Matt Patricia. And I would have understood a Bears loss today. But to lose in that catastrophic of a way, to melt down that poorly when, when the Bears were leading uh, by 10 points with 433 left in the game, uh, it, it really spells the end of the Nagy Trubisky and pace era in Chicago. So it really is a question of when. And then the second moment that stands out to me is Nagy today uh, when asked what the Bears have accomplished in the last two years. Uh, he said, I don't know. Uh, and that really tells me that him as the head coach is, is not only mentally signing out, but uh, acknowledging that he's the biggest part of the problem. He also, in the past, when he said uh, last week that he wasn't worried about his job security, now said that he doesn't know what's in the future for him. That's a very similar answer uh, to what we got from um, from John Fox back in 2017 before he was fired. Uh, so Zach mentioned it. I don't think it's a question of whether or not it happens at this point. I think it's a question of when it happens. So let's hop into that now. Zach, uh, the McCaskies, you posted this actually on Instagram a couple weeks ago. You were the first one to do it. The McCaskies have gone three for three from 
uh, firing a head coach, a GM, or both in seasons when the team has a five-game losing streak. We see it now extend to six for the Bears. Look, I mean, you take a look. Uh, Ryan Pace has missed on some massive draft picks throughout his time. Uh, Adam Shaheen, uh, Kevin White, Mitchell Trubisky, possibly Cole Komet. Uh, I mean, he did have a touchdown today, but a lot of people are still up in the air about him, and I'm sure he'll get more chances once Jimmy Graham uh, is out of Chicago. But he's he's overcommitted money to the defense. The Bears are the only team right now uh, contributing 100 uh, over $100 million to their defense, the Bears being at $117 million uh, put towards their defense. Uh, and Nagy was his hand-picked guy. And, and in regards to Nagy, hopping down a little bit, you know, the offense has obviously failed. Uh, a lot of people have talked about Nagy's ego throughout time. He's got a pretty bad ego, and he didn't give up play calling uh, in, in, until week 10. Uh, and and he baffled the whole quarterback thing, Trubisky and Foles both. No matter who starts at quarterback the rest of the season, I'm hopeless because they're both obviously not the answer. So I want to ask you, if the Bears fire anyone, uh, you know, obviously if they fire <clears throat> Pace and Nagy tomorrow, if, if, if that happens, uh, they can start the new executive search uh, as early as week 14, week 13. Uh, you know, obviously we would see an interim head coach. That's probably Chuck Pagano or Bill Lazor, uh, which wouldn't be great at all. But the Bears could start search for a new executive. That could give whoever the new executive might be a chance to look at coaches just to get ahead uh, in case they do get hired by the Bears. So I want to ask you, do you think it makes sense to make this move as early as uh, the wee hours of tonight and early hours of tomorrow, or do you think we should hold on to Nagy and Pace throughout the rest of the season? No, I think you need to make the move. Uh, it's not a matter of finishing out the season strong, honestly. It's a matter of, you know, I mean, if you're going to come out and say, you know, it's it's an embarrassment, have some personal pride, and then you kind of point fingers, but you don't really put any of the blame on yourself. Like, you have to be able to take blame as a head coach. And when you're not doing that, when you go out there and you say, the defense who's carried us for three years uh, did not perform, perform well today. And then, you know, I mean, you come out today and they ask you, what what happened to this team? Why are we falling apart? And he says, I don't know. Uh, it just tells you. I, I mean, there's nothing else to say. It's just it needs to be a, a move like this needs to be made today, uh, tonight, if not early tomorrow morning. And, and uh, I think it's the best time for this to happen. I think the team needs to move in a new direction. Uh, you know, six straight with this with this defense, regardless of how poor they've been playing the past few games, it doesn't matter. And this this move has to be made. You have to you have to move on and and figure out where to, where you're going to go from here. Yeah, I, I got to go ahead and agree with you. Uh, you know, taking a look at Nagy and Pace, I think they have good intentions. They come off as very classy, respectful people, uh, and, and I respect them uh, still. They're professionals, and it's it's a tough business. But I think an excuse, a loophole, can be made here to get rid of them now. Uh, this is inexcusable. The Bears started off the season 5-1, and one, and I think that the only winnable game they have left on their schedule is the Jacksonville Jaguars in Week 16, maybe Green Bay in Week 17 uh, if Jordan Love starts and they they lock out all their starters because they're locked into the playoffs. Um, it's going to be even worse next week. Houston's going to come to town. We're going to see the whole Trubisky, Deshaun Watson fiasco. Uh, I think this mood needs to be made now. Uh, I, I think it would be a powerful stance to take, and the McCaskey family could really show us uh, whether or not they do it tomorrow or they do it in a week. I think if they fire Nagy and Pace and possibly even reassign Ted Phillips within the organization, uh, I, I think they could really be telling us that they're committed to playing winning football, but you put it on your story earlier, Zach. Uh, if they let this season drown out and, and keep them in Chicago, uh, it, it really says a lot about the ownership. And, uh, you know, People have their opinions on the McCaskies. I respect them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I could really say a lot depending on how they decide to go about this. Before we close this one off, uh, obviously we didn't have a post-game show today. I don't think there's any need for it. We, we got a ton of thoughts out during our live stream uh, for four hours during the game. But I want to ask you, and I think there is one instance where this could be applicable. If the Bears do keep either Nagy or Pace, who would you want them to keep? I'm going to go first. Uh, I'm going to say I would actually want them to keep Nagy, and I don't think it's going to be a, a very wholesome thing. Uh, I think actually my prediction is that the Bears fire pace and they let whoever the next GM is 
decide what happens with uh, the rest of the coaching staff. Uh, do I believe that they need to clean house? Absolutely. I think Bill Lazor needs to go. His play calling has been horrible. Uh, maybe a little bit, I would say a little bit better than Nagy's, but nothing incredible. Uh, Chuck Pagano has been horrible. The Bears uh, have still had a strong defense, but you can tell that they're missing uh, the turnovers and the ferocity that they had with Chuck Pagano. And I think Nagy needs to go. So uh, I do think they need to clean house, but I do think there's an instance in which uh, they could bring in a new executive, a new GM, and have that person make that decision for the team. So, but uh, overall, I don't, I don't think they're going to stay. That my prediction is that they both go. But Zach, is there any instance where you could see one of them staying, and if so, which one? Yeah, no, I'd agree with you. I mean, if they are going to keep one, which I am not sure how that is looking right now, um, I think it'd be definitely Nagy, uh, just because you know, I, I mean, uh, he has been working with what is like a historically poor offense. So, I mean, you have to give him a little bit of credit. He's trying everything he can. Pace didn't address anything in the off season. It seemed like he kind of just threw Nagy and Trubisky out there and said, you know, go out there and win games. And, and you know, obviously they can't do that without, you know, they need more help in offense and, and that wasn't addressed. And you got to take a look back again at that $117 million attributed right. to the defense. I mean, the offensive line is a massive issue. I think play calling is also an issue and QB is also an issue. But the number one, I mean, obviously you look for a new QB next offseason, but I think the number one overall uh, place to address has to be the offensive line. And yeah, Pace has done a horrible definitely. job of that. So. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, and like you said, 65% of our cap is in the defense. Now, I know it's a defensive-minded team, but, I mean, in this league nowadays, you can't get away with just having a defense. You need both sides of the ball to produce. And, uh, you know, even with an average offense, I mean, like you saw in 2018, it was pretty average, I'd say. Um, you know, we, I mean, we had a good season, but it's just, uh, obviously times are different and, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, but if they are to keep one, then it would definitely, I think it'd be, be naggy for sure. But apparently there, there are rumors that, uh, Pace is in with the McCaskey family. So I'm not I think at this point being I friends doesn't matters. matter. He's a yeah. millionaire and yeah. this is embarrassing. And that was a couple of weeks ago too, when we were like five right. and three, uh, but it should be interesting to see. Uh, what's next for Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy in Chicago? I never thought, never, ever, ever thought that a missed kick uh, would down Mitchell Trubisky, would down Matt Nagy, would down Ryan Pace. And now uh, when the Bears seemingly have a kicker, all the other issues uh, pop out of the woodwork. So it should be interesting. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to episode number 102 of Uncut. As negative as it sounds, as negative as it seems, we are still going to be making content for the rest of the 2020 season, whether that be talking about moves that need to be made in the offseason, the 2021 NFL draft, and still even covering the rest of the season to the best of our potential. We're going to stick around for you guys and continue to give you guys content. So be sure to continue to support us. Comment below your thoughts on Pace and Nagy. And if you made it this far in the video, do us a favor, drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, BearDown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs each and every day talking about all of these games. Uh, we're going to kick off our Week 14 coverage soon, and I'm sure throughout the offseason on our website we're going to be having discussions just like these. So be sure to check it out if you have any free time. There's a ton of people that work hard behind the scenes. If you would like to find us on social media, you can head to Bear Down on Instagram and Twitter. We're announcing a Christmas giveaway very soon. We want to get back to you guys as much as, as as much as possible. And finally, you can find the links to Zach and my social media pages down in the description. Instagram and Twitter, we're very active on both platforms, and it's a great way to connect with us. Zach Rimbos, man, these last six weeks are looming large, and it seems like uh, we have a facelift coming soon in the face of this organization. So any last words before we close this one out? Man, at the end of the day, it's still bear down, but, uh, you know, it, it just it hurts. It does really hurt. You know, hopefully things turn around because I really do want to see – you know, another good team in, in my lifetime. <laughs> Luckily so. for us, you and I are only 20 years young, yeah. uh, even though it seems old. I feel like uh, just a couple of years ago, I had just started my fan page and I was in high school still. But uh, hopefully we can see a championship at some point uh, in our lifetime. And I hope the McCaskies, as well as what all the fans are calling for, uh, realize this, that this standard of play is is not something that should be acceptable in chicago so we shall see uh if tomorrow's a dark day in lake forest at hallis hall and we're going to be reacting to any news that comes out in the near future guys it's been a pleasure to be your host once again my name is chris malpe bears fans as always do us a favor and stay safe and bear down hey win lose or tie uh we're all still chicago bears fans until the day we die
So we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.